Thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. My name is Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. <laughs> what the literal fuck was that? At first glance, Not For Broadcast looks unappealing and generally confusing. I mean, the fact that the developers tasked me to take care of an entire news station, it's just fucking nuts. Unbelievable twat. I mean, seriously, what do these buttons mean? And what the fuck is this radar on the right? Am I censoring things now? Even the advertisements in this game are just ridiculous. It's... Holy shit, I love this job. In reality, this game is pretty simple. In the beginning of the game, you get a call from Dave. Alright mate, Dave here. Turns out he can't make it to work, and what was supposed to be a peaceful night of you just cleaning the studio has now turned into you being responsible for the hectic mess known as the National Nightly News. Dave quickly introduces basically all the mechanics the game has to offer. The audience meter. The broadcast screen. What a wild ride this has been. The master screen. Hi, I'm Megan. Oh, piss off. The signal screen. Basically a lot of screens. Jesus, I wash your face, The vision mixer. And to what do you attribute this model decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. Your editing gets graded at the end of each segment. You can buy accessories to make your stay, uh, you know, a lot more fun, I guess. My favorite accessories to buy were the Alan James stress ball. I mean, he's a funny guy, right? From the water, the chemicals, they're pumping it full of belief juice. Uh, I also acquired the alcoholic avian because he can't stop drinking ever since this quarantine. And funny enough, neither can I. I purchased the poster of the attractive female from the Zhu de Cochon. Zhu de Cochon. Yeah, right, that commercial. And, uh... <laughs> You know, I thought the tutorial was pretty well handled, actually. It was very concise, and starting this game, I, I felt like I knew what I was doing. And, you know, it was wrong of me to think that, because I haven't the slightest fucking clue. These buttons on the left are your signals, or cameras. When your crew is on set at the broadcasting network, or on site recording an event, it's important to click whatever camera is best fitted for the program. Basically, whatever you want the viewers to see at home. A generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic pedophiles. So if you have people running around naked or cursing at each other, it's probably not the best for the station to be airing that. Night on the National Nightly News. One minute back. You know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Jeremy. How much are you being paid by them then? Oh, shut the fuck up, Alan. I've never heard so much Our children are our future. Now remember, you have complete control of the station, which directly affects how the public perceives information. It's, it's fucking brilliant, but I'll continue. Whatever you see on the left here isn't actually live yet. The monitor on the far right is what people are seeing at home. The left only has a precisely two second delay. It's set up this way in case you need to censor anything that's being said. For example, people getting blasted on camera and swearing about their grandmother getting fucked. <laughs> Now this device on the right is a son of a bitch. Throughout the broadcast, especially when there's a fucking storm, holy shit, there is interference. Now while you're trying to make the footage being displayed live look like there isn't a total fucking idiot behind the camera editing it, you also have to multitask and make sure the audience receives what you're actually broadcasting. But if you're, you know, your little, your little white thing there is hitting the green, this happens. Comes down to moral decay. I actually like the challenge that the interference mechanics bring, or rather, I like the idea of having something interrupt me when I'm trying to be a good editor. In execution, the current interference system is kind of boring, and it really just serves as an annoyance, but I wish it was just as annoying as it were interesting. Right now, the system, it kind of needs improvement. By the way, if you're shit at editing, for example, not displaying the people who are talking, or even showing a lack of variety with reaction cams, or maybe even, I don't know, showing nude women on live television because you're lonely. <coughs> anyway, uh, most errors that occur will affect the number of viewers that the station brings. Not in Having them deteriorate before your eyes, leaving you unemployed with no one interested in how bad you are at your job. <coughs> your job is to keep the station afloat. Sadly, I cannot recommend this game for the gameplay alone. Luckily, since this game is so good, I actually don't have to. If you're here for a simple broadcasting simulator, you're kind of missing the point and you're not really going to have fun. <laughs> No more! I've had enough of this 
<laughs> Unbelievable twat. <laughs> to fully understand the story of Not For Broadcast, you literally have to stop playing the game. You have to rewatch an entire broadcast that you've technically already seen, but couldn't afford to pay attention to because you're already too busy micromanaging the entire news station. I love this. So many games are dedicated to telling story, essentially operating as interactive films. So yeah, they're technically a video game, but when I'm playing The Wolf Among Us or The Walking Dead, I'm there for an almost cinematic experience that I get to play around with. Sure, quick time events and scripted fights allow me to mash buttons and I get to maim drunks and, you know, it's fun. But I'm here to immerse myself in the world of Big B Wolf or Lee Everett for, you know, a season at least. I'm not really there to play a video game. Now, I'd argue that Not For Broadcast operates the exact same way, and it's actually the best of both worlds. It serves as a fun simulator in the first half of the gameplay, trying to keep this radio station afloat and purchase props to remind me of my crippling loneliness, and the other half turns into something of a TV series where I have to piece everything together and come to my own conclusions about where the story's going, which is also directly affected due to my actions in the prior segments of the game. Th that's really fucking cool! When I'm behind the scenes of a past broadcasts and I'm watching characters lose their shit, I feel like I'm in on some dirty secret. Like, like I somehow earned it. And I didn't earn shit, this is exactly how the developers want their game to be played. It's brilliant. Video games are a creative medium like no other, and developers should always be inspired to break stereotypes and find new ways to tell a story. Not For Broadcast is a game changer. I'm gonna give props to the developers of the game for finding ways to spice up the gameplay in each chapter, introducing new mechanics, utilizing weather conditions. I'll honestly be surprised if they can bring refreshing new mechanics throughout the entire game, it's only an early access, but so far they've delivered. The story follows Jeremy Donaldson, your news anchor, and reporter Megan Wolf. And then there's Jenny, who... I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I don't entirely know what her job is. A lot of behind-the-scenes banter is between these three, and whatever nitwit is being too loud at the station. Sorry Seven. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes. Now, my favorite character is Alan James. He's a self-promoting conspiracist slash anarchist? Possibly? He's the funniest character in the entire fucking game. Orgy is the right word. Yes. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. As soon as I got the option to attend one of his shows, Alan James is right in front of you, I, I immediately took it. My first reason was, I was playing a bit of a evil playthrough this time around, and I wanted my character to fall in love with this guy and start supporting his ideology. Quickly, Alan! Mm -hmm. um, what does the future look like Quickly, to you, Alan? Democracy is dead. No, of course. And two, my marriage was literally falling apart in front of my eyes. Now usually, when a fictional relationship that I have begins to fail, I often resort to creative methods to cope with my loneliness. This time, I thought, why do I need a wife who will love and care for me despite my obvious flaws when I can bask in a 100% ring-spun, combed cotton goodness? Parola USA offers literally one shirt. Lucky for us, it's the only shirt we'll ever need. Buy one or 50 of their latest crew neck tees. Check out your favorite size with professional models such as this handsome gentleman. <laughs> Parola USA also employs women. Uh. Guys, it's really fucked up. Visit ParolaUSA.com slash nobility slash REF slash 18. I tried to get a prettier link, but just like my marriage, that operation was a complete failure. You're given an identity. Your name is Alex Winston, you're married to Sam Winston, and you have two children, a boy and a girl. Alex isn't some faceless fucking character that you just walk around as and click buttons and just do your job and the game's over. You're a man in this world with a wife and a child, and you can see firsthand how the collapse of your local government affects your everyday life. Sure, you can't pick your name or customize your avatar, or pick a cute outfit, but you get to see how broadcasting a certain message affects the public. Because you are the public. Your family is the public. Your brother-in-law Chris, who sneaks into your house in the middle of the night and begs to take your passport to flee the country, he's the public. <laughs> If not for broadcast seems like something you'd be interested in, perhaps you like, I don't know, playing stories that actually change depending on your choices, you should definitely try this game out. Pro tip, people have said that after downloading the prologue of the game, they've also received a coupon for 30% off of the actual game. Now, I can't really confirm or deny if this is true, and there are plenty of people talking about it in the forums that say it is, so I'm just gonna assume it is. Um, I'm just gonna have all links in the description. I hate writing outros, so I'll just thank my Patreons, Maher Maher and Thexen, and I'm, I'm just gonna go.